Reject Nation. Guys, my hair looks good right now. It will soon be destroyed by me wearing headphones. So this is gonna be the longest intro ever. It's time to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. so no, good. let's get to it, guys. Leave a like if you can, because guess what? We're watching the sixth episode of Peacemaker. Burn after reading, a play on the Cohen brothers. Burn after reading. Subscribe and click that notification bell. Go notify when our reaction for the next Peacemaker episode is up. Full length watch alongs where you sync up with the time code. As always, we're over at our Patreon page. Become a super Paraject today by checking out all the kinds of crap we cover over there. And lastly, them handsome boys over at Prepper constantly touching themselves while they're editing down the highlights with us. Oh, <laughs> you guys, you perverts! That's why we do it. Hardcore! Hand me my gun! She knows? She was walking around with Peacemaker's X-ray vision helmet on. He's not gonna like that. He's touchy about his helmets. What the fuck? She got one too? I confronted him. He came clean. My people came to Earth because our planet was dying. The one in Gulf, she's our leader. She? Well, she had a vagina. Aliens got vagina. We liked it here. We were gonna live out our lives. But then Gulf and the others started planning. For what? How to dominate your world. I was the sole dissenter. They said I was oversensitive. You're oversensitive. <laughs> you took over someone. Yes. Yeah, you killed someone, whoever Mern really was. I needed to stop them. So I inhabited the worst person I could find. This man, Leota, he's... Ah, makes sense. He's a murderer. But still, I know his thoughts. He's... Even he could have changed. I took his freedom and his face. And every day, I dread waking up to his memories. <laughs> we need to be sure they don't move the cow before we find it. The cow? Yes. What cow? You forgot to tell her about the cow. Do you really want to do you really <laughs> We're talking about, uh, there's a real cow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, kids, and that's how I defeated Kite Man. <laughs> Dangerous villains with only my two fists, my Desert Eagle, and two rocket launchers. Any questions? <laughs> Have you ever met the Flash? Yeah, I have met the Flash. Like everybody else has ever met him, I thought it was an unbearable D-bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rubik's Cube World Champion 2025. Why is your pet's name so unoriginal? Why are you my least favorite kid in this class? Because I can see right through you, and I think you're a loser. <laughs> oh, Shoot him. <laughs> yeah. Jamil's kid. Do you have an origin story? <laughs> <gasps> Trigger point, man. You dumb fuck, you killed him. The wrong kid died. <laughs> that's my mom. She used to bartend in the Starlight Lounge. Becky Coolidge, yeah, that's right. I haven't seen her in like 10 years. Oh, God. I think you might be my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's about to accelerate. Last night I took all the evidence to a judge. You took what to what? And I was issued an arrest warrant for Christopher Smith, our new key suspect in the murder of Annie Sturphausen. We can rightly have two people in jail for the same crime. You have got no idea what you're fucking with here. He does not look happy. You really go through this stuff, huh? I'll try to swipe some more. Aw. Oh, they're buddies now. I love his sensitivity to the animals. We're gonna approach with caution, surround the trailer, and enter easy. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> Don't kill a bunch of cops, Peacemaker. Don't kill our favorite cops, at least. <laughs> Dude, you still have that thing? Yeah. He tried to kill us, and he cut off half my toe. Yeah. Sometimes I just think I'm insecure in my masculinity, so I'm making up for it by having a dangerous pet. <laughs> Oh, oh, damn. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> One tap is yes. Two taps is no. Do you understand? <laughs> is that a peace sign? What's your favorite color? Dude, it's, it's yes or no question. <laughs> is your favorite color teal? Bro, what the fuck? Praying Mantis thing has a favorite color and it might unexpectedly be teal. That is mildly interesting, but he just drew a peace sign on the jar. Don't we want to see what's up with that? Yes, we do. 
Why did you put a peace sign on the door? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, please. I see how you are. Your preferred conversation partners oh, are Eagley and Gok, <laughs> neither of who are capable of speech. Try introspection on that motherfucker. I do surround myself with things that don't talk back, and maybe I just shouldn't blame yourself. Dude, fucking, I'm talking. Listen. <laughs> I'm getting this weird feeling that you're angry. Ah! <laughs> I feel you, Chris. What's so urgent, man? If you're at home, get the fuck out. The police are gonna be there any second with an arrest warrant. I'll grab Goff. It's time to bring a piece. Yeah. <laughs> How many cops I gotta kill again? <laughs> this is the Evergreen Police Department. Open the door and come out with your hands up now. <laughs> this is the Evergreen Police Department. <laughs> come out now. Stay low. I'm taping Goff to me so I have both hands free. <laughs> Hurry up, Adrian. Oh God, what if they find the diary? Shit. Oh, the diary. What the hell? Whoa. Eagly. Eagly. No. Eagly. Eagly. You should have taken her. I told you not to do that. Look, our worst piece paralyzed. Oh shit! Stop her! Nice, Eagly. MVP. Oh yeah. Stop right there, I'll shoot. Damn, Eagly. Yes, my dude. There's a car for you over that hill. Who are you? Do you want to ask stupid questions? Or do you want to live? Which one do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> They're nice and hard now. <laughs> well, that's not right. Pull it hard. No! <laughs> fuck dude, no! No! Uh, fuck no! We can track these things! No, no, no! No! Shit! Dude. It was a secure phone! I can't fucking track it! That was a pretty big fuck up on my part. Fuck, man! Oh, I had a fuck ton of super cute pictures of Eagly on there, man! They're irreplaceable! <laughs> <laughs> Just as the shooter was running away. Peacemaker. No, no, no. Caucasian man, about five and a half feet tall. Red hair, striped shirt with a red tie. Had a black mask and. I think it was a... Talk about the Hamburglar? Hey, this is gonna sound weird, but I think Locke was just describing the fucking Hamburglar. Striped shirt, Where'd red tie, fedora, black mask. Easter eggs. Hey, you have a diary? No, they found one in your trailer. Bullshit. I got a notepad, but I barely ever use it. Fuck that, we got a bit of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kept Goff. You kept Goff? Because Peacemaker is masculinity issues. It's like a knuckle dicks tiger. I didn't trust you guys, and I kept him because I wanted answers. And I knew he wasn't going to get out. But then he got out and took over an oriental woman. Asian. Ugh. You're not supposed to say oriental anymore. It's Asian. Why? Nobody knows why. It's just bad. <laughs> I do feel that she was fond of you. Who? Sophie. You? Sure. But in the end, this is better for everyone. What is? Just enjoy the moment. like the Terminator learning how to spy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, boy.
I see a body cam coming. Oh, he's gonna put the suit on. Oh my goodness. Damn. Oh damn, they're gonna possess the whole police station? Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh <laughs> damn. <laughs> Oof. Come on. Come on, Fitz. Yeah, that's a hell of a shot. Damn it. They really make this seem like a really painful process. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no. Wow. They're all practicing their <laughs> smiles. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Look, another Nazis, but that's a pretty badass cause. <laughs> You know, context aside. <laughs> Aww, carving the dove a piece. It's a P90, I put a dove a piece on it for you. Hmm. Yeah, it's facing the wrong way. Tail should be on the right. Super nice though, thank you. <laughs> Here you go. I don't think I really care about the dove a piece. I just think I said that because I don't want to kill people anymore. Wow. I know when we first met, I said I thought you were a total piece of shit, but I don't think that anymore. 85% a piece of shit, maybe, but the rest of you is night, Chris. <laughs> Amelia. Good night, Amelia. Oh, God. I've always wanted to do that. Stop in my tracks, just look over my right shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not a full body turn, just <laughs> yeah, right turn. Always want to do that. <laughs> Your day will come. <laughs> well, he's actually playing this. <laughs> Among many items found in the search of Christopher Smith's home was a diary. What the fuck? Written by the suspect. Oh. The diary maintains that the world is inhabited by aliens. Find and stop the peacemaker by whatever means necessary. What the fuck? <laughs> God damn, that is intense. Yeah. The <laughs> next episode is gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be a <laughs> nationwide <laughs> manhunt. <laughs> it's gonna be with the students, you think? It's a good guess. Maybe vigilante questions. All right, well, you're one for one. We'll see. Let's see if you're we'll see. two for two now. <laughs> that would make more sense, because I don't know how much they'd let the kids improvise. <laughs> How much they let John Cena just insult a bunch of children? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, honestly, though. Like, I wouldn't put it past him to have it be that scene. Because there's so much other curveballs and things you could do. Sat. Looks sat. Does this look sad? Hey. <laughs> That's crazy. It looks like they used a blooper and just cut out all the filmmakers laughing and shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Damn, we were both wrong about that one. That was unexpected. Constantly subverting expectations. <laughs> Brilliant. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We Don't watch show trailers us. for next episodes. I don't want to see anything. All right, guys, let's talk about it. That was a great setup. Man, Goff had me going. I thought Goff might have been like, where's Peacemaker and the Doofus or whatever you said, uh, because I was like, and he did the peace sign. So I, I was thinking maybe, maybe this butterfly is having like some type of change of heart and is wanting to help. 
We still don't know what their full intent is, do we? No, not really. It looks like world domination. Certainly. <laughs> One of those plots of aliens, like, our planet was destroyed, so we need to... I mean, though Myrna goes into it, but it, it feels like our planet was destroyed, and it seems like the only place we could repopulate would be here. Yeah, we've got kind the of perfect the... organisms to take over. Yeah, but humans suck. Yeah. But we will use your host Ruin to create everything. studies and experiments on us. Yeah. But I feel like it'll be something a little bit more to that. I mean, that was a diabolical plan. Is, is Waller working with it? That's what it seems like <laughs> now. I mean, now I'm wondering, does Waller have one in her because of how, like... How they would do that? You know, mess with the DC universe a little too much. Yeah. But, you know, you got to suspect anybody who's a little deadpan. <laughs> I mean, Waller seems like she would do that. I guess. It seems like she at least wanted to pinpoint the crimes on, or, or maybe they improvised on it with the diary knowledge. Maybe. Because it sounds like what Waller wanted to do, regardless, was... Pin, pin this on Chris. Yeah, 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 pin this all on him, ultimately. As like which an sounds act like a Waller insanity. Thing. Yeah, totally. Damn, that's real That's real messed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's some crazy reveals, though, man. That's some crazy reveals. You got Sophie becoming the butterfly. I didn't see that moment coming at all. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> they definitely put those characters front and center for the end of the show. <laughs> I mean, they really, James Gunn especially knows how to really ramp up the tension here mm -hmm. with uh, intermingling comedy. I felt like Vigilante is stupider than usual. Today? Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. like obnoxiously dumber. You seem to find like a, he, he wrote like a finer line before. And this yeah. time I'm like, oh, you're like way dumb this episode. Like, <laughs> like dumb, dumb, not like quirky dumb. Yeah. <laughs> In like, certain moments. Quirky yeah. dumb, but still capable. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is there certain moments where it's like, are you just entirely oblivious? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Which I feel like is a pitf easy pitfall to fall into with a character like that is how do we keep him dumb always on the right level? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But that seems like a, they dumbed him down a lot for the sake of the comedy beats yeah to really foil to, to really drive a wedge between him and chris it feels like and to really f create some problems in their escape and all that it is interesting learning too about i mean a lot of this that everyone has like some type of inner conflict happening here but you know at the kick of it with Mern, you have your cliffhanger there where like Mern bad butterfly but as i suspected mm. as many of us did is that while being a butterfly He's not like the rest of them. I feel like his intentions are true. I feel like they're authentic of what he's at least expressing and motivating this team to do. I think that there's a little bit of a wrench in it is that Waller plan with the diary, but he didn't know about the diary. Yeah. Um, and, and But when it comes to uh, what he was saying about humans and stuff and it explains his character too, mm -hmm. with his background, of like who Mern the mercenary was and why he was such a threat and to know that at one point he took over after all that mm -hmm. and sees faith in humanity and sees the capacity for growth and how people can change and reflecting on him and why he's more expressive about his emotions he's now more sensitive one. he's the emotional <laughs> one yeah, yeah yeah and you do you do see that which i i thought was interesting to see that like pretty much the other two companions harcourt and um not dive here economos yeah and economos both already know about it and you know it also does show this level of trust that harcourt does put out there it's like we know she's a got a tough exterior but there's a softy underneath those layers and you're, you're this this show's been peeling back at what's really underneath the surface for all these characters and man john cena he just knocks it out of the park he is so good yeah like i love that was um the internal expositional lines that he just spits out <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. i think i'm what is that? i think i'm acting out because i don't want to kill people anymore yeah. yeah or even that whole thing about uh why he has the pets about masculinity yeah yeah, yeah. or when he's talking with vigilante about like i just right i don't have any i don't have any friends who i can like who can talk back to me yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he just gets more more angry as it goes but this episode seemed to deal when, when you look at the opening scene with john cena you know d doing that thing where it's like a hero's attending class today and he's never been really looked at as a hero mm -hmm. there's a lot of criticism towards what he stands for what his actions are he's viewed as a criminal more than anything else and 
when he's doing one of those things where he's talking to you know students at a classroom and you know getting asked questions about being a hero and even just the way how he reacts and responds to things and even the question about his origin story how that's rooted in a way where he feels like he really messed up and killed his own brother by accident or we actually haven't really even explored how that all went down yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was intentional. I don't think it was. It sounded like it'd be. I mean, it seems like an accident, but in a situation where, like, what did you expect? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, it seems like Augie certainly, like, made them fight each other or do something really crazy and violent. And it's like, you know, he's, he's, he could easily die in the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. But with the care, but with, with Peacemaker, it seems that this show is going out of its way to show how we got to slowly strip him down from you know the like him and Adebayo they both live in the shadows of their dominant parent mm -hmm. you know that's a big part of why I think they confide in each other and why there's a, a level of empathy that Adebayo had towards Chris more than anyone else on the team she can sympathize for him in a lot more ways when she sees where he comes from and uh, the rule, the subconscious rule Chris's father has on him, kind of like what happens with her as well. And so, like this whole, the, their whole thing deals with, you know, parental traumas and learning to break free from their upbringings. So with Chris, we've slowly been having him become more vulnerable, understanding more of why he is the way he is. And now realizing that whole thing that would like would Rick Flag a peacemaker, what a joke. How yeah, the identity that he thought he was, you know, putting out there was something that was heroic, but really isn't heroic. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to kill people anymore. He's having a crisis about that. So this is like a an identity crisis, a, a hero image symbolism crisis that he's going through. And it's done in some real poetic ways. I really appreciated the piano scene of how he just it's a little play piano for like two minutes or anything. Right yeah, and it's another, I mean, I feel like every week there's a new reason to be like, John Cena, man, I liked him before, but now. <laughs> but but the, the, even that, like, I love that they took the time. This, this episode, it's like, it's lighter on needle drops, and, the, and not that that's technically a needle drop, but, you know, like, they really let the musical centerpieces play. And I thought that was really wonderful, too, because, you know, like, usually there are ways to frame that out. And it seemed like he really put in the time to at least learn the fingering of the piece to sell it. And yeah, like to have an actual moment of unexpected, you know, like an unexpected talent to emerge, but also one that comes out in a moment of contemplation, I thought was really, was like a really like lovely and sophisticated choice for a show like this, you know, that yeah. does so much in the irreverent and in the bombastic, uh, you know, not that, you know, that's not well within the sort of subversion that we're doing with him, but that was a really nice moment. And especially after like a little piece of bonding with Harcourt, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and and I mean, like to juxtapose the two, like I think that's a really good point of, yeah, you have him and Adebayo in oddly similar positions, even though they're so different in the way they express. And I thought her scene uh, with Kia was, was one of my favorites of the episode. Like I love just the, the nuance they have coming from her. And I'm really curious to see where she's going to end up given who her mom is by the end of the season and all that. I mean, if they're arcing, she has to stand up to her. She has to, yeah. Or, She'll like, confess the truth to psych. Chris. You could probably confess the truth to Chris. And, yeah. And that's what this show's been doing is, you know, like, we know Peacemaker. I think I've said this before. Peacemaker showed us. Suicide Squad showed us Peacemaker. This is showing us Chris. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love it, man. It's, it's, it's a beautiful show in a lot. It's so beautiful. It's weirdly beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And also, too, like, really tight on, on the plotting, I feel like. Like, this was still pretty intense. Even though this feels like the pivot from Act 2 to Act 3 episode, like, it does still feel palpably uh intense and having it be that you have this mass scale invasion opposed with this very grassroots just nasty uprising of these white supremacists coming together like there's such disparate elements and i'm really excited to see how they all crash and make a holy mess by the time the finale rolls around one thing i did want from this show leading in though was a little bit more of the fucked up side of Peacemaker, to put it lightly. The the, the yeah. side, I mean, even if it's like done through flashbacks of, the, you know, like the, the thing that was always marketed, 
uh, I care more about peace than anything else. I'm willing to kill any man, woman, or child again to achieve it. And I wanted to see a little bit more of that. Uh, see, like, <laughs> a truly disturbing peace operation at some point. Yeah, what he considers, like, bringing the peace. Yeah, yeah, because it seems like for most of the show, he, while, he, you know, he has anti-hero qualities, it feels like for the most part, they have made him pretty easy to like. And so, yeah, I can, I can share that for sure. Yeah, it was maybe, maybe just in the form of like flashbacks or talking about things he actually did that he thought were mm -hmm. like reflecting back on it, you know, yeah. or you see like, oh damn, our character did some messed up things in the past. Yeah. yeah. After all this journey we've been on, can I still like him by then? <laughs> yeah, and knowing what it, seeing how he is haunted by those those things you know vigilante calls him out on it all the time mm -hmm. in like humorous ways of like we kill the bad guys and you know sometimes we kill the wrong guy but we just brush it off like it happens <laughs> you know and uh, I want I want to see some of that like what are like the men women and children <laughs> that he killed in order yeah. to achieve peace because mm -hmm. it seems like he has done that it's pretty confident in doing it with the Gusto. suicide squad it was like a no-brainer for yeah. him yeah 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 you know even killing brick flag was like I, like he didn't want to but he was willing he to, and he, to and he, he yeah he did what he had to mm -hmm. or like eating every dick on that beach yeah it would be cool if freaking blood sport showed up at one point <laughs> yeah, Dude, be, i mean that yeah. would be epic <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean any like really any of that i would love to see and uh, uh daniela melchior tweeted something about you know like wanting to come and bring some love to Chris, just on twitter or whatever but like any of them i would love to see show up well i i think what they've been doing here is while they've been stripping chris down now the public is after him and the uh, the whole police force and the nazis are after him too his own father's after him like literally it's it's like internal and external forces are all collapsing in on him right and, as he is becoming a new person and as he was feeling like he was part of a team uh he no longer trusts that team because they're clearly hiding stuff from him and they don't even know how to like lie anymore like that yeah. scene where he's like what's going on do you think we're stupid but i can tell something's going on and like the way they're all looking at each other it's like you're letting on so much that you're clearly hiding something from it i like that <laughs> i like that bit a lot and that it doesn't get resolved this episode i thought that was a really nicely hewn bit of inter-character tension and turmoil to be a just, just immersed in yeah of like ah like it, it does hurt because so much of the fun and so much of the joy has been oh man they actually are building this team and now they're yeah still all these different deceits still ready to come out from pretty much everybody but economists yeah. <laughs> which uh yeah I just, yeah he's, this is a really good ensemble piece and uh, what they did establish too though is that you know when the butterflies take over the brains they, they retained all the information and knowledge and the experiences of whatever the host is. So, you know, like, that's why I think creates a good level of stakes, too, with that cop who was working with our team. Mm. The, the, like, villainous cop or whatever. Oh, uh, Chris Hyredal. Yeah, yeah, him. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, once he's taken over, all that information they have access to now. Yeah. So, like, it's all going to... I feel like we're going to lean into some type of catastrophe of a situation, it's something that's going to be gone. massive. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking forward to it so much. I think there, I think this was, like, one of those episodes that did a really good job on progressing the plot, progressing our characters, at the same time really setting up something major to come. Mm -hmm. Like, the direction of this has been so clean. But <laughs> goddamn, listen eagerly murdering people or at least knocking them out in violent ways was awesome now <laughs> the centerpiece of the entire thing don't underestimate that eagle Ever. i'm constantly worried that eagle's gonna get shot down but i thought it was gonna happen i thought it was gonna happen at that moment yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was like oh my god here don't it comes sacrifice i was yourself. like is eagle gonna take the bullet for peacemaker like that's what i thought was gonna happen with the cop showdown uh when they were holding holding up a gunpoint I, I thought that's what was happening but no we didn't go that way I'm oh, I'm holding out. Two episodes left. We we can make it with with a living eagle <laughs> by the end. I think the reason why the writing of James Gunn is so can be even if I don't like every like I like clearly I like pretty much all of it. If I have like a slight criticism here or two, I think what really shines through his work is that he loves his characters so much as if he loves people. Yeah. You know, like that that care for them and the introspective ways and examination is something that I think shines through his work generally. 
um, this this way of like simp this uh, yeah this just care uh, about them. It's it's not just like what are some character development beats. It's <laughs> it's a true like he likes them and he cares about them. Yeah, and uh, that always shows. So yeah, and the freaking uh, I do hope. We get to see James Gunn's girlfriend doing it with John Cena in this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> gorilla she, arm dick. <laughs> she's, such, she's, she's such a great character, though. Yeah, she's yeah. such a great actress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's awesome. I love, I love it anytime she's on screen. Yeah, she's she has so much personality underneath that deadpan, and and it's great that that both can exist at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm ready for some badass stuff. But guys, what do you think about this episode? Leave it down below. Subscribe, hit that bell, leave a like. Last but not least, let's do a page. Mikhail Linden, if there's a white dragon at this Patreon, it's gotta be you, because you're probably the whitest person who subscribes to us. Because you fly majestically into the sky, much like a dragon, not to be confused with any other kind of dragon. You have wings that soar, you have heat and passion that comes from your breath, and, uh, and, and you're not a racist, and that's the key part. Mikhail Linton, this is, uh, this is my, what I want to, to, to communicate to you today, is uh, you, you just, you're, you're so wonderfully I can just feel your eyes burning into the side of my head, much like Mikhail's dragon flames. And uh, I wish you were my dad. I feel like you would make me tougher as a person. And uh, and we could rejoice in our whiteness together, because that's something that we don't get to do as white people any longer. It used to be okay, and now we're not allowed anymore, Mikhail, and I'm authentically upset about that. It's happening. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I, just, I just started running and, and here we are now. Mikhail, you're a good guy and I love you and don't pay attention to anything. I'm just, just going to cut the camera. Do that. <laughs>